What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook, and this is Blue Giant Media. We're here to help you find, learn, and play the games that you love. Today, we're going to open up the box of Dice Forge by Regis Bonasse and published by Libelud. And we're going to go ahead and set the game up, and we're going to play through a couple rounds so you can get a feel of how the game plays. So let's jump right into it. So if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure that you have set this box up as it is described in the rule book. It makes setup go much quicker, much smoother. Okay. So what you're going to do is take this board. You're going to take all of these die faces, get ready to unsleeve them. Take this, flip it out. I will set this game up for two players because that is the way I normally play. You can go ahead and set this up along with me. I like to do my setups in real time so you can get a feel of how much time it actually takes to set the game up. When they put the time, of, you know, the play time on a box, they don't include setup time. And some games are really cumbersome, some games aren't, and I want you to have an idea whether this is your first time playing the game and setting it up, whether you checked it out from a library. I want you to know about how much time it actually takes to set up the game. So you can keep that in mind. Okay, now, when you are setting the game up, you have a couple different options. You're going to be taking after you get your player boards and you set your colored uh, markers in there. You're going to determine who the first player is. You're going to put the round marker down. And it says on here where it's going to start based off of the number of players. So if there are two players or four players, you're going to start on round nine and count down to one. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna with three players, you will start on ten and count down to one. Or if you if you really want, you can go one up to nine or one up to ten. Obviously, it's your game. <laughs> uh, each player will then take one of each of the two kinds of dice, and you need to make sure that you check in the rulebook that they are set up the way they're supposed to. One die is supposed to have four one money faces, one two uh, point face, one blue uh, face. The other one has five one gold faces and one red face. So you'll take those, set them here, and when you are setting up the game, um, I, th I believe it recommends for your first game to choose the cards that have a blue dot here in the corner. So I will be setting them up that way. And then you can take, I will say it, it, it bothers me that this part of the rules and setup is not included in this portion of the rules. So you really need to use both alternatively, back and forth, back and forth, which bothers me. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take several of them. Um, some of these have more than one option, thus why some of them have a green dot, some of them do not. Uh, but we are going to place these down. The Sphinx goes here with six. And if you have um, two players, you will use two of each of these cards. If you have three, you will use three of each card. And uh, I think you can figure out the rest there. Okay, so each one of these corresponds to uh, different mythological beings that we can fight. So we've got, uh, the, over here is a Sphinx, over here is the Mirror of the Abyss, we've got a Gorgon, we've got a Minotaur, we have the Guardian's Owl, Wild Spirits, and the Elder. And these are broken down so um, these ones here, it's got the little uh, red crystal, so I've kind of got this flipped, I guess. I guess you could say that it goes this way. 
so that it makes it so it all makes sense. Um, and then the ones in the middle have uh, five and five of each. So it takes five blue and five red. So those ones are mixed up. All right, and then, so we're gonna use the Hydra there. And then we have Cancer. And the Helmet of Invisibility. And the Blacksmith's, no, this is the Blacksmith's Hammer. We also have the Blacksmith's Chest. We have the Silver Hind. We have the Satyrs and the Fairy Master. Then we have additional copies for when you play with more players. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is unsleeve this. And since we are playing with two players, it says to remove two of each of the faces. That's too fiddly for me to want to deal with right now. The only places it actually matters is with these ones and these ones. So I will take these and remove two of them. So those two are in play. These two are not. These two are in play. And these two are not. Okay. And now, despite the fiddly nature of how many pieces there are, it's all set up, and that's why you want to make sure you follow what is uh, set up in the uh, the rule book for how to store everything in here. It makes the setup go way, way faster. Okay? All right, so one of the nice things about this game is that even when it's someone else's turn, you get something. So on every player's turn, every player rolls the dice. Uh, before that, I guess we do have just a little bit more setup that I forgot. We have to give everybody their starting resources. All right. In a two-player game, there are two cards per stack, two die faces per pool in the sanctuary. The starting player is going to get three gold. So we'll say this is, uh, well, we already said this was the starting player. So one, two, three. And the other player gets two. One, two. And the reason the starting player gets more is because the uh, other players still get to roll their dice even when it's this player's turn. So by the time it comes to them, they will have quite likely more resources at their disposal. Okay, and then it says we play nine turns. Okay, so now we are ready. So on every player's turn, every player rolls their dice. So on this player's turn, and in a two-player game, you roll your dice twice. Okay, so you're going to roll the dice once, gives a blue and a yellow, roll them again, gives two more gold. This player is going to get one, two, and again get two points, one, two, and one money. Okay, now it is the active player's turn to go to the second phase, where they can choose, uh, if they have any, they can call for reinforcements. So this is where if you have some of these that have persistent abilities, now is when they come into play. Since it's the first round, we don't have that, so we'll move right into the third phase of your turn, and that is where you get to choose one of two things, either spending money to get new die faces, or you can spend uh, the sun shards or moon shards to um, do a heroic feat. Um, so I could spend my one blue 
to move my pawn over here and claim one of these two things. This one increases my capacity for storage. And this one gives me the ability to um, spend money. Instead of collecting it here, you can move up a track and if you reach a certain amount, then you collect a pretty decent amount of points. For right now, let's see, I've got six money. So I can spend my six money over here. Um, I could buy two things from here, but I can't buy two of the exact same face. Uh, so I gotta get two different ones. So I could get uh, one of these, one of these, and one of these. So let's see what I wanna do. Uh, it's early on. I can choose to either try and bulk up one die with multiple nice things, or I can try and um, make it so one die has just some really good stuff on it. And why don't I decide to do, I'll just get a money and a red. Red is especially useful, these sun shards, because you can also spend them if you have two you can spend two of them to basically take another action of buying die faces or doing a heroic feat. So red is especially useful. So because of that, I want the, you know, the possibility of rolling two reds. So I'm gonna put the red over here. And the rules say that you should use this to pop the other one out. Um, I'm careful with my games, so I kind of go around. So there's one, and then I can choose to just add to this one so that just about anything I roll is good. That's, that's a distinct possibility. I think I'll do that. That way this one die is kind of extra good. All right, and then it says to place the die back with one of the new faces up. All right, and then now is when I would choose to possibly spend two red in order to uh, take another action. But I'm not going to because I can't. So now it goes on to the next player's turn. So on their turn, everybody's going to roll the dice twice. So one money, one red, two more money, one, two. And then we go over here another blue, and one money, and all right, one, two, oh, I spent my money, and I got that, and then I spent one, two, three, four, and one red. Okay. <clears throat> so now this player has one red, so they could do, they could come over here, or they have eight money, which can take them over here. And let's see, that's tempting. Can you give me some flexibility? But I think this is especially tempting because, it's, I mean, it's just me, it's personal preference, but I think in my limited experience playing this game so far, that red is the most valuable resource because I don't think there's anything much more valuable than getting extra actions. Okay, spent my money, and that is the end of round one. So we count down. Okay, now it's back to the first player. Roll once, we've got a red and one money, and we have two money. One, two, and then the inactive player. There's that two, very nice. One, two, and one money, and one, two points, and one money. Okay, so now this player has already managed to get all the way up to eight which is quite nice. So I think what I'm going to do there is, hmm, I could go ahead and get another one of those 
and I could then spend two to come over here. You know, that sounds fantastic. I think I will do that. So first thing I'm gonna do is move myself right here, spend my two blue to fight uh, the silver hind. And this is gonna give me two points now. And then it is going to give me, at the round, uh, second phase of every turn for the rest of the game, I will get a chance to re-roll what they call a minor blessing, re-rolling just one die to get an extra, um, extra ability off of that. So I flip it over and place it next to my board to show that I've already gotten the ability, but you can see on the back side it has that reminder to get that ability. Okay, so then I'm going to spend two red to take another action, and I'm going to spend my eight in order to take another one of these, and I'm going to really stack. Since now I'll be able to choose one die to reroll, I want to choose this die, which has just about everything awesome <laughs> on it. So I will pop out another one money and put the two red in there. So now when I reroll this die, I have a decent number of faces that are very beneficial for me. Okay, and now we come over to this player for their turn. So they will roll twice, one blue, one money, and roll again, another blue, and another money. And then this player gets to roll. So one blue, one uh, moon shard, and I spent my eight, I keep forgetting to move that down. So I get one money back, and then another red sun shard, and one money. Okay, so now this player has three red, two blue, um, let's see, four money. That money's not very good to me right now, but what I can do is go here, spend just one of my red, to get this, which is a one-time ability. It just gives me two points and then three money and three moon shards. So I take that, I flip it over after giving myself one, two, three, and one, two, three. So now I have the ability to take another turn and I've got uh, five moon shards. So I could come all the way up here and uh, I could get a times three. Is there anything that I actually want to times three yet? And that would be, it would be really nice to times three that. So maybe I decide I want to just jump up there. So I'll spend my two red to come over here to spend my five blue. Since I don't really have, I mean I guess I have some money now but this gives me four points, which reminds me I did not take my two points from this card. And then I will take an additional four points, which moves me up to 10. So the first row here is all ones, and the second one is tens. So once you get to nine, you bump it back to zero and bump your tens up one. Um, and then I get to immediately take a times three die face from here. And I get to forge it into a die. Okay. And that is the end of the second round. Okay. And at this point, I think that you've got a pretty good idea of what works. Uh, you're going to play through all 10 rounds. At the end of the 10th round, you're going to total up whoever has the most points. And whoever does have the most points wins. Okay, now you've got a pretty good feel of how to set the game up and how gameplay goes. If you have any other rules questions or anything that you want to ask, make sure to let us know in the comments below and we'll get right back to you as quick as we can. If you're looking for any information on my full review of this game or my unboxing, then you can check the links for those in the description below. And if you want to know where to buy this game or many others, you can find a link to macronovagames.com in the description below as well. If you want to find a video for something we don't have, if you want to find a game 
that isn't on macronova.games.com. Make sure to let us know in the comments below or send them a message. We want to thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and uh, until next time, have a wonderful day.